Eric, how you doing? Good morning. You well, well? Thank you for having me and good morning to you also. Um, we're here to talk about the fact that you front a new show on Channel 4, The Money Maker. Um, I've been told that you're the first black person ever to host a mainstream business show. Um, so kudos, kudos for that. But in truth, when I had a, a glimpse over your uh, two decades strong business career, the kudos uh, has done been earned a lot earlier than this. So talk about the show, the format sounds exciting. Um, I understand you're putting up your own money, Eric. What's, 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 what's happening? Tell me about it. So the, the people who like business shows, and again, thank you very much, Joel. I know the voice. We have been with the venture capital firm that I that I run, Impact X. We have actually been featured in the voice, and I believe very much having spent most of my life in the United States where there are a number of Black publications. I think it's absolutely imperative in terms of community building and empowerment that there is the existence of newspaper. So this for me is, is um, absolutely imperative that we talk to and actually break news in these types of in these types of media channels. So thank you very much for um, speaking with me. So the um, moneymaker is based on an American format, and it's pretty simple. You know, I come to find four different companies, and I spend time with those four different companies, going on a journey with them starting off with evaluating what's working and what's not working, making a decision as to what I believe the transformational plan should be, and then working with the, the business owner to decide what it is that needs to stay, what needs to go in order to make a business that for the future is going to be able to return my capital. Because as you said, I'm putting my money into these companies. This is not fake money. This is real money, which you know I could use to you know buy a house, pay for education or that type of thing, but instead is going directly into these businesses. So I have a vested interest in these businesses, not just, you know, meandering along, but to become rocket ships, really producing um, sensational fiscal results. But to be clear, when I do this kind of investing, it's when I do all sorts of investing, I don't expect just to make back money. I expect those investments to actually yield some type of social benefit. They need to make sure that you know, the money isn't just happening and then we, we are ruining communities or we're ruining uh, the world, but then indeed we're doing things that are actually going to be sustainable, meaning that they will continue on into the future and that they improve uh, a whole group of stakeholders' lives. So lucky for me, all of these organizations are that I, in, in which I invested have the ability to do that. You touched on it, um, Impact X Capital, uh, venture, capital ca uh, venture capitalist firm which you're CEO of, talk, mm -hmm. about, talk about that. I mean, dig down deep into what you guys typically get involved in. So it is, so actually the reason that I'm doing the moneymaker is it's because it's an extension of what we do at Impact X. Impact X, we're looking for undiscovered gems around Europe. We have, oh, since 2018, found thousands of companies that exist that are started by black, brown people, women around Europe. And those companies are ones that we evaluate, should we invest in them? We've evaluated and made the determination to invest in 22 of them. Uh, and those are in digital and technology sector, they're in health education, lifestyle, and they're in media and entertainment. And these are the kinds of organizations where we find a lot of people of color and a lot of women participating in those industries and coming up with great ideas. So those great ideas is what we're investing in because we're not trying to build, you know, sort of a, a fantastic restaurant. We're trying to build the next Netflix. We're not trying to build the next um, sort of delivery service, you know, local delivery service. We're trying to build the next Amazon. And we believe, and we've proven that those organizations are going to come from underrepresented communities in Europe that there are black women in Bristol, there are you know, Asian men in um, Edinburgh, there are you know, people who are disabled in Heidelberg who are coming up with sensational ideas. It's our job to find them and to invest in them. And it's kind of what I'm doing in The Moneymaker also. We are finding companies that are not investable companies from third parties. 
And we are finding them in Birmingham, we're finding them in Manchester, we're finding them in Sussex, and we're finding them in London. We are going in and I am putting my money into those companies as well as my years of expertise. It's the same thing that we do for ImpactX. It's just done on a different scale and with companies that generally have a different kind of a origin story and a different sort of an ethos than the ones that we have in ImpactX. But you know what we do find that's in common and one of the reasons why I do this is that there is an overlap. Lots of people are overlooked by capital sources whether it be the banks, whether it be friends and family, whether it be venture capital firms, they cannot find the fiscal help that they need. And so individuals or organizations are like Impact X or like me as the moneymaker are required to go in and help. And if we're really fortunate, we find a great idea, we find a great team, we find a great future market and we put money in, we put our shoulders to the wheel and we're able to get fantastic growth. And that organization is able to hire more people a whole group of diverse people with decision-making capacities. They're able to help a whole lot of communities because all that income then flows back into households and communities and that they're able to do all the things that we want to do. And that is to impact the world, meaning that the byproduct of all this is wealth creation, it's actual education disparity removal, it is health disparity removal, and it's building jobs and organizations for the future that are future resistant. That when we have another COVID, companies like Zoom do very well. Companies like your down the street restaurant don't do very well. Companies like Facebook do very, very well. And Tesla does very, very well. Your barber shop and salon doesn't do so well. So we wanna build those generational changing organizations. And I believe whether or not it's Impact X or whether or not it is the moneymaker, that's what I'm doing. Microsoft, SwiftKey, AOL, Time Warner, listed on uh, the power list as one of the most influential black people in Britain. Mm -hmm. I could go on in terms of feathers in your cap, but the one that jumped out at me was the endorsement from uh, President Obama um, and your integration into you know, that office, the White House. Um, talk about that as a moment in your career and, and just outline, I know we could be here probably for a while if we, if we went right back to the, your humble beginnings in Alabama, but talk a little bit about how you traversed the peaks and troughs of business and, and have risen to some of those highs and just how they've impacted on you. For me, education has been a great enabler. So it has made possible a number of things. And it's not just the education. I just wanna be clear about that. And this is, the kind of, this is the kind of fallacy that exists. Education on its own, so you can get some of it from a book. You could get some of it. I mean, we have this fantastic thing called the internet where you know, everything is available that has been known and we're increasing the amount of information that's been known in the world every few minutes. Now, part of that's TikTok, so you know, there's that. And some of it's just entertainment oriented, but a lot of it is sort of deep information about things. And I can investigate things I might never have known about. Sort of you know, my history, I can investigate uh, and interrogate things that have happened in the past. But when I started my education, you know, it was really book oriented. There were things called libraries that you went to and, and that's where you would get your information. That's where you do your research. But education on its own can be somewhat of a commodity. What is not necessarily a commodity are the experiences you have while being educated, which are some of the differentials. And those are some of the differentiators that actually exist. So what I found in my life is that when I left um, Greensboro, North Carolina, that's where I went and did most of my schooling um, with my, parent, my parents who were teaching at um, Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, a, black, a historically black college and university, that's where we were born. But then dad took a job as a Swiss, as an executive in a Swiss chemical company and we moved out of um, Alabama to, um, to various parts of the United States. In any case, my education mainly happened in North Carolina, not known for its educational system. I then went from there to Princeton University, which is an elite Ivy League school. And I got certainly first rate education, but it wasn't only the education that I received, which included things like, you know, book smart, but also a way of thinking, a way of arguing, a way of presenting my, um, my, my thoughts and how I write and that kind of thing. It allowed me to meet a certain group of people. Those people are people who became part of a network. And that network has been 
very, very helpful to me because I continue to run into that network. We are all decades out of university and have moved in various parts of the world to do various types of things. And I find myself still relying on those people, whether or not it's because someone went to become a, a very famous director in Hollywood or someone went to work on Wall Street or someone moved to Kenya to work in a um, interesting technology company. Those are people with whom I, who, on whom I can call and we have an affinity. And in many ways, because we have so much time, you know, in university you get so much time to talk to people and introduce yourself to people, you understand sort of how, what makes them tick and our values are somewhat similar. And so even if we don't see each other for long periods of time, we understand what we're trying to do. So that element of that network and that affinity group has been very helpful. I then went on to Harvard Law School, which is again, another elite university, another elite training institution. It is a university, but it's a graduate program in the United States. And that is where I ran into Barack Obama on day one of my, um, of my education. Again, you, because of that, it's not just that Barack found me out in the world somewhere and said, Eric, we need you to be on the council for underrepresented um, uh, entrepreneurs for the Small Business Administration. There's a council that's going to be headed up by a Black female billionaire, self-made billionaire named Kathy Hughes, who started Radio One and then floated it on the New York Stock Exchange. He didn't just note find me out there. I was part of a network of people who were tied to a, a then sitting president. And that came from law school. So Again, it's not just the education that I received, the thoughts, the approach to analysis, the approach to writing, but it was also then the relationships that were built. And that is one of the problems that has actually plagued us as Black people, that our networks don't necessarily serve in that same way. If you go, and use an example here, if you went to Oxford or Cambridge, if you went to Imperial, there's a network that you build and that that network is helpful here in the UK and probably translates to other parts of the world. Likewise, in the United States, I found that to be very helpful. Some of my investors are people I met in my fund and the first people who wrote a check to me are people who I went to university with, who are successful in their own right and doing whatever they're doing. But the other funny thing is that network then builds other networks and therefore I'm able to meet people like Ursula Burns, the first black woman to run a Fortune 500 company, who's my vice chair, Rick Lewis, who runs the biggest black business here in the UK that will have 20 billion under management by the end of the year. Those are the people who my network then produced so that I could then work with. Lenny Henry, Lenny Henry's not someone who's, he's another one of my vice chairs for Impact X. You don't just run into Lenny Henry on the street and Lenny Henry says, I want to invest capital with you. There are a whole series of things that, happen to, that have to happen. Not only do you have to have a good idea that appeals to him, then you have to have some people that he can check with and that's your network who say that you're an okay person and that he can put trust in you when you just have an idea and very little track record. So that for me is the big lesson. And again, it's also the part that's so challenging because many of us as people of color don't have those sorts of networks. Mm. And if, if, that, if that kind of network is, is necessary in order to get you to the point where you have Impact X and it's funded, and then you have something like the, the money maker, and that all comes through network. If your network doesn't present those sorts of things, we have to use alternative means. Sometimes it's done through the church. I mean, I'm a big church goer and a big church member. Sometimes it's done through um, the, the places that we do end up working and building sort of um, places and building relationships there. And you know what? Sometimes it has to happen inorganically and I've got to do it online. So I've got to become an Instagram influencer and sort of help people to understand that it's worthwhile listening to me. And then a whole new network is opened up. I find many strategies. And the great thing is I'm seeing so much creativity among black entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs in Europe as to how they are substituting for a network because they did not go to uh, London Business School but they are able to get their needs met and they are very creative in how they do that. And they are really knocking it out of the park. It's the same thing that I see in Impact Dex, which makes me happy every day to go to work. It's the same thing that I see in The Moneymaker. These are some people given just a little bit of direction, given just a little bit of um, input in terms of some gasoline in their engine or some electricity in their engine, they really can go and they can be very, very creative. Like I said, we could probably be here for the rest of the day and then tomorrow. Um, some interesting gems and, and I'm grateful for your enlightenment and your time. I, I really like to speak to the, the younger viewers of you know the voice content online, especially because I know that's where they live. Mm -hmm. um, 
What should they be focused on, Eric? Just succinctly as you can. In, in 2021, uh, having just entered the new financial year, mm -hmm. what should they be focused on? I'm talking to your teenager who's on the cusp of wanting to turn ideas into reality. I think they should focus on tenacity. I want to speak directly to those folk. Tenacity is the important thing, meaning that it's never a straight line. My life has not been a straight line to where I am today. There have been so many pushbacks. There have been so many reversals. There have been so many brick walls. I have to figure out what the ladder is to get over the brick wall or the jackhammer to go through the brick wall. I've had to sort of backtrack and go down another path that's taken a bit longer to get to a point. I think tenacity, making sure that you understand where it is that you want to go and then if you know, it's sort of looking at a map. It's, it's like you, there, it's not a map that says go from point A to point Z. It's, a, it's more of a terrain map. It's like, this is where you wanna get, this is where you are. There are all sorts of things in between, all sorts of jungles. It's like playing Jumanji, all sorts of things that can get in your way, but you're trying to get to the end result. So be prepared to have some challenges occur. And then how you handle those challenges are not only instructive in terms of looking at you and saying, what kind of character do you have? But it also is very instructive in learning lessons that can then be applied so that the next obstacle you come to can be circumvented or can be overcome much more quickly. So it is all about tenacity and learning. That's what I would say. Final plug for the show before we part. The, the final plug for the show is if you are interested in the arc of human drama, you know, people who are in crisis and trying to get their companies to survive and they then need not only for it to survive, but for me to come in, it has to thrive. How do we do that? It's almost like speed dating, get to know each other, get to decide what the problem is, get to decide what we want to do about it and make it happen. It is just a whirlwind and it's all done within an hour, four companies, four episodes. And just to hint, two of them are black companies, black run, owned and operated. So make sure you watch for those entrepreneurs, because I think there are lots of lessons for everybody out there, not just about running a business, but about how to be tenacious. Eric Collins, serial entrepreneur, CEO of uh, Impact X Capital. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm wishing you all the success with the show. I know there's four episodes, right? So our four episodes starting yes, May the 4th at 9 p.m. on Channel 4. Brilliant. Thank you. Appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. Take care, Joel.